I've had a lot of things influence me over the years, but probably the two biggest things have been Mystery Science Theater 3000 and the works of Kevin Smith. Lately, he's been branching out. He's been making a lot of movies that aren't uh, really falling into his regular demographic. He did horror with Red State. He did the buddy cop movie with Cop Out. He did another horror, but more the weird horror with Tusk. And now he's doing Yoga Hosers, which I didn't realize at first, but it's actually a spinoff of Tusk. Yoga Hosers is another stretch for him where he's trying to do something out of his usual wheelhouse. Now, for some of you, it's not going to work. First off, because it is a spinoff of Tusk, and there were a lot of people that just didn't like Tusk. This has Johnny Depp reprising his character from Tusk, and then Kevin Smith's daughter, Harley Quinn, and Johnny Depp's daughter, Lily Rose. There are two girls that work at the E to Z mini mart and things take a turn for the weird when they get attacked by these Satan worshippers. And then they take a turn for the even weirder as these Nazi bratwurst things come crawling up from out of the ground called bratsies (laughs) that try to take over the store. From the trailer, I thought that was going to be it, but it actually goes beyond that. It's not just them in the store. They actually spend a lot more time out of the store, really. This is going to be tough because I enjoyed it, but this was just another goofball movie that's totally not going to work for everybody. Now, I will say that there's been some stuff in his past that I didn't like. I was kind of on the fence. I liked parts of Jersey Girl, but at the time I thought that was definitely his weakest movie. And I did not like Cop Out at all. So I'm not going in as a Kevin Smith fanboy saying that uh, everything that he does is perfect. There's two things of his that uh, I didn't particularly enjoy joy but this it's going to be a tough sell because a lot of people that like kevin smith's usual sense of humor are going to be a little bit put off by this because it is his wit but it's dialed back a little bit it's not for the usual kevin smith crowd Essentially, if you saw the trailer and you have hated the trailer, there is a very high chance that you're going to hate the movie because the movie is tonally very much like the trailer. It's silly, it's tongue-in-cheek, and it's two girls that are on their phone constantly. So that right there is going to put a lot of people off. The cast is a lot of Kevin Smith mainstays, people that uh, he's worked with numerous times before. You've got Johnny Depp, who, like I said, was reprising his role from Tusk. You got Haley Joel Osment, Justin Long, Genesis Rodriguez, Jason Mewes, Stan Lee, Kevin Conroy. But then you had a few other people pop up, Natasha Lyonne, Adam Brody, and there was a fairly famous YouTuber. I'm not going to spoil who it is for the people who want to be surprised. If you want to find out who it is, go to the IMDb and you'll find it easy enough. What I liked about it was that even though it wasn't as filthy as something like Clerks or Mallrats, they still did kind of push the PG-13 envelope with language, which is something that I'm seeing a lot more recently, which is making me happy that, okay, maybe they are starting to kind of push the envelope of what they can do with PG-13 again and not just keep watering down R-rated movies. This is actually a PG-13 movie that was made for the PG-13 crowd, and Kevin managed actually get a fair amount of swears in there and a good bit of innuendo so kudos that he was able to get that done because i know that he was having some problems with just the dumbest thing about a character getting balls drawn on their chin it was ridiculous that originally got them an r rating and uh, they fought it and were able to get uh, the pg-13 the movie was funny i thought that it had some bizarre moments and there were a couple of things that did really catch me off guard so i was happy with that What I didn't like was the girls were in a band and uh, they had a couple of musical interludes throughout the film. And I did not particularly think they were the best of singers. And I'm not going to shit on, what, 16-year-old kids for not being able to be great singers. But for a movie where I think they had four songs throughout the movie and there was one where it was actually pretty good but the other three wasn't really in their range so it did kind of make it like watching a bad uh, American Idol audition. Some of the CGI when they were killing the Bratzies was pretty bad. The last thing is I would say probably about the third act it stopped being funny. 
It had moments that were okay, but it wasn't so much that it was serious. It was just I felt that a lot of the comedy that was set for the third act didn't really work on me. Now, there was a row of girls behind me that they thought it was hilarious. So again, I think that hit its mark where this was a movie that Kevin made specifically more for a younger demographic. This wasn't for the uh, old school Clerks fans. This was more for a new generation the Harley Quinn, Lily Rose generation. So they're going to appreciate this more than I would. There was some texting jokes and that kind of stuff. And uh, it didn't really work on me, but they were having a blast. So in that case, I can't fault it because it obviously did its job. Yoga Hosers is definitely not a film for everyone. A younger crowd, especially a female crowd, will probably appreciate this more than your average Kevin Smith fan. Now, I have a feeling that a lot of his hardcore fans will like this a lot, even though it's not aimed at them. A lot of them now are older and they have kids of their own. And I think that they'll be able to appreciate that aspect of it, where this is a movie about clerks, the next generation, I guess you could say. (laughs) 